the baddest white man who ever walked this planet. The great Dick Gregory called John Brown the greatest American who ever lived. Because if it wasn't for him, the Civil War would have never kicked off. W.E.B. Du Bois wrote an entire book on John Brown. Dick Gregory has wrote about him several times. Dr. Claude Anderson has wrote about John Brown. John Brown was born on May 9th, 1800. John always had a hatred for slavery. Starting at an early age when he saw a little slave boy get beaten by a shovel by a white man. John felt that it was God's plan for him to free the slaves. John's family always told him that slavery was evil. One day, angry pro-slavery white mobs had killed an abolitionist named Elijah Lovejoy. They shot him outside of his newspaper office and they burned his entire building. John attended his memorial services and said from this day forward, I am concentrating my life to the destruction of slavery. In 1850, Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act, mandating that all authorities in free slave states aid in the return of an escaped slave or imposing penalties on those who aided the escapes. John Brown's answer to that which created his own group. He created a group called the League of Gileadites. John raised and trained his kids to be as much of a G as he was. John was a very stern father and believed in tough love. One of his sons got shot and he begged his dad to put a bullet into his head. John's son begged him to just take him out of his misery. While he laid there in agony, John yelled at him and said, shut up. If die you must, then die like a man. John Brown's first taste of blood was in the Potawatomi Massacre. John came in with his people, slicing, stabbing, and shooting people to death. What he's most popular for was his raid on Harper's Ferry. They came through killing everything in sight. John and his crew came in taking hostages, stabbing people, taking guns. John was giving guns to slaves and destroying everything in his path. John only had an army of 21 people, with five of them being his own kids. John was expecting over 4,000 people, but it didn't turn out that way. Harper's Ferry was where the weapons were made, so it was full of military rifles, bullets, and four divisions of troops guarding it. John also reached out to Frederick Douglass, he reached out to Harriet Tubman, and he reached out to other black leaders. But they declined, they wouldn't give their assistance. John felt if they joined his crusade, he can use their connections. They could call the slaves to arms. He felt that the slaves would not rally to an unknown white man. But if they knew about Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, John used a term called the bees will hive. John and his crew took over Harper's Ferry pretty easily. 
but he waited way too long for the slaves to respond. John kept telling his crew to be patient. The bees will hide. After seizing and holding Harper's Ferry for two days, the slaves did not rally to his side. John made the fatal mistake of waiting way too long for the slaves to rise up. During the attack, John stopped the train and he decided to let the train go. But the train staff informed Washington of what's going on. Washington sent Robert E. Lee and the rest of the Marines to capture John. John was arrested and received the death penalty. On December 2nd, 1859, the day of his execution, John wrote in his diary, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land would never be purged away but with blood. I had and I now think vanity flattered myself that without very much bloodshed, it might be done. After John Brown's death, Frederick Douglass wrote, Brown's struggle to the cause of freedom was far superior to mine. Mine was a small light, his was a burning sun. Mine was bound by the time he was stretched away to the silent shores of eternity. As a black man, I am willing to speak for the Negro slave. But John Brown was willing to die for the slave. John Brown was hanged in front of thousands of people in Charlestown, Virginia. Among the people at his execution was General Stonewall Jackson. Poet Walt Whitman. There's over 40 books on John Brown. 40. Four, zero. I haven't even read half of them, but I would highly recommend two of them. One would be W.E.B. Du Bois' book. The other book would be written by David S. Reynolds, the abolitionist who killed slavery and sparked the Civil War. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe.